assists, 10 rebounds, 12 points. So he, he was really good for them. You have to be careful when, when you have the ball and he's around. Yep. You know, he's a smart player. Yep, absolutely. Um, and then Nas Reed. <laughs> Nas Reed. <laughs> 20, oh, my goodness. 23 points. It's like 20 minutes on 17 shots. He went through the Bay Area like scorched earth. <laughs> hey, something about the worst he enjoys. It's unbelievable. It really is. <clears throat> but uh, two things. One, the uh, season low for points in the paint was uh, February 24th against Houston with 22. Okay. And then they only scored 41 points in the second half. Yeah. Which is not a season low because of the two uh, debacle games in the boroughs area in New York. They yes. only scored 38 at New York, and that was a, a team that did not have a good roster that night. So, And the first game this year where both teams didn't reach uh, triple digits, 99-96. So the first game this year, nobody's got to. First game involving the Warriors. Yes, involving yeah. the Warriors, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know it seemed like the whole NBA, but no, just the uh, <laughs> just, just, just the Warriors. In a, in a season where... 140 to 130 doesn't surprise anybody anymore. 99, 96 certainly does, but this is, this is just disappointing because they had the door was right there. The whole day was working out for them almost to a T. Yeah. And you know, the, the LA Lakers lost, um, Dallas lost again. Uh, you know, they were, it was just set up perfectly for them, but now they are a half game back of the Clippers for five. They're a game back for four, but now they're two in the loss column, and they're really two games back for four yeah. because Phoenix now has a tiebreaker. Um, Minnesota has the tiebreaker on Golden State right now because if they tie, because and Minnesota has a game at hand because Minnesota has a better conference record. I believe that's right because they're not divisional rival. Either way, okay. they have a better division record. They have a better conference record. The team split the four games. So Minnesota holds a tiebreaker on Golden State. And, you know, that's not good because if you stumble again somewhere along the way, yeah. uh, those tiebreakers come in come into play, and all of a sudden, bam, you're in a play-in game. And uh, so, or if you're in the play-in and now you're on the road. So that's uh, that's not good for Golden State, as we like to say. No. I mean, what? They don't have the tiebreaker against the Suns. They don't have it against the Clippers. They don't have it against the T-Wolves. They don't have it against, against the, the Lakers. Lakers. They have it against the Pelicans. They have it against the Pelicans uh, and, the and, and the Thunder. And they have it, uh, well, they have it against Dallas, but it may not matter yeah. with Dallas. Now, they're, Dallas is now two games in the loss column uh, back of the Warriors, so it's going to be a hard road for them. They're they're two and a half back of the Warriors, and that, in essence, three and a half back of the Warriors. And let's see, you were mentioning before. Let's look this up. Luka Doncic got his 16th technical today, and their next game is tomorrow. They're on a back to back. It's at Indiana, so not the toughest back to back. Indiana is not having a great year, but. But certainly a back-to-back, no Luka Doncic tomorrow night, so that's that's going to be tough for yeah, them. Yeah, Dallas is in trouble because they're leaking oil anyway. So they'll have no Luka tomorrow, but they'll have Kyrie. And they've, they've played okay without Luka and Kyrie in there. But then they're at the Sixers, at the Heat, at the Hawks, Ooh. home against the Kings. It's kind of weird. You know, the Warriors had a late uh, – Road trip, but it was mostly Western Conference opponents. Yeah, this is a late Eastern Conference five game roadie. Wow. So they're 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 gonna be scratching and clawing just to get into a play in game. And they were six there for a while, five or six, and then just started sliding and now they're really, really I mean, you lose back to back to the Hornets. I mean, wow. It's been that kind of year. The Warriors got swept by Detroit. They got swept by Orlando. Now, Orlando's pretty good. But by the time they got swept by Orlando, yes. Orlando was not very good. No, they were not but, very good. Uh, but Yeah, that, the Detroit one's still like. That's just, come on. <laughs> the Detroit one's like, that's, yeah, that. that. But you're right. It's just odd to see a team have a, a lengthy road trip against the the other conference. And that's exactly what they're going to have to do. Or a home and home with an Eastern Conference yeah, team. Yeah, that's a weird. That was <laughs> a weird one. Very weird. That was just very, very weird. So, <laughs> Don't tune out. A yeah. lot of things can oh, happen, and they it they changes most by the hour. They most yeah, because this one. Remember what we talked about last game. We're like, if they could win this one, that kind of gives them that separation, right? Where four, five, six are now kind of separated, 
and then everybody else. Well, now Minnesota's jumped back into it. The Warriors yep. have kind of slid back into that, and there's there's all kinds of stuff that could happen. Uh, it's like racing in a super speedway. You kind of lose your momentum, get out of line, drift back a little bit, get back <laughs> in the line. So, yeah, drifting as they uh, yeah. call it. Yeah. So, and they're like the Pelicans just got through thumping the uh, thumping the Clippers. I know. So who knows what the, what, what could happen there? I mean that that's one that you'd love to get. I mean. I don't even want to think about that. You get that one again. And we, we said this two weeks ago. All these games that you're going to be playing against teams that are right around you. Oh, I know. And then and, and the Thunder are a pain. They're a pain because they're young, they're long, they're athletic. Yep. And they're playing free and easy. They don't know they're supposed to be uptight at this time yeah. of the year. You know, they've because, never been in this situation. Yeah, before. because they don't to know. them, we'd love to make it, but whatever. Yeah. You know, we yeah. just go out and play hard and see what happens. And no, I, I agree with you on them. Absolutely. And you never know where the Kings are going to be at uh, with two games left to go in the season. Uh, at they're, Denver, they're, they're going to still be grinding because they're only three games ahead of the Grizzlies now. Yeah, they uh, the Kings are two back, but I wonder, you know, they, they've, they've got eight games left. Yeah. Uh, and two games back with eight games, that's hard. I mean, Memphis would have to really stumble. Yeah. So no, I agree. They, so that's that's, that's going to be hard. I'm not saying they can't do it. I think they can, but I think Memphis would have to help them somehow. So um, I, Memphis I, I think kind of right at the ship too. Yeah, I nine think, out of the last ten. I think the top three are kind of locked in. I think you're right. No, I think so. you're right. Uh, and then the whole four, five, six will be. Uh, it's going to be really something's wrong with the Clippers. I'm not sure what. And it's not just that Paul George has been missing a couple games. They've 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 dropped some games that I thought they would have, they would have won. Not enough just... support from their alumni. I think that's what it is. is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Clippers. <laughs> I'll be down there. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be down there for you. Oh. But it's gonna be, it'll be fun because the Eastern Conference is pretty much set. Is it not one and two are still up for grabs? Yeah, I mean, and then um, three is going to be Philly, and four and five will be Cleveland and New York. I think Cleveland's kind of landlocked. They're three back. They're three back in the loss column, New yeah. York, and they're five in the loss column ahead of New York. So yeah. they're kind of locked in at four. Philly's kind of locked in at three. Yeah. Um, Cleveland yeah. Knicks are probably locked in at four or five. Yep. They're... The Nets and the Heat could certainly. Hello, Jim Peterson. How are you? There he is. How are you? Big Jim Peterson. A little little bit lower on my back. Thank you. Oh, oh that's nice. There we go. Oh, that's nice. Very good. Warriors Radio. Massage is on the air. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. So, Jim Peterson well, listen, joining us, Warrior. The, I, get to be on the, I get to be on the air with you guys. This oh, is yeah. awesome. This Pete? is great. How are you? That's, that, that's what, this, well. is, this is what happens when you walk into our booth. Yeah. You don't get out of here on skate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I left my backpack out in the hallway, so how how safe is it out there? Uh, James K. Cable. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's right here. I'm just kidding. It's right here. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. What, what a game. I mean, what a great game. So, I mean, I mean, it was, you know, I don't, well, I shouldn't say great. It was a little crazy, but it was competitive. It was it was uh, it was a crazy game from a defensive standpoint for us to for us to put the hammer down, like and really put the clamps on. And for Jaden McDaniels to be in foul trouble like that and really only play, what did he play it? Eleven minutes, ten minutes, whatever, in the game. Jaden McDaniels yeah. is our best best defender, mm -hmm. and so, but he you could see a little bit of the petulance he gets. He gets a little bit. Um, he, he's, he's, he's 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 got an angry side, but like he's he's pretty like. Like deadpan, face mm -hmm. spatially, you know his reactions. I mean, he, like literally, when you see him on the bench, he's got this deadpan. He could have just hit a three that won the game. He would look the same way. Yeah. But um, I just think that Rudy impacted the game. I mean, Kyle Anderson, and I was telling you this yesterday, Tommy, when we were together. Kyle Anderson is our team team MVP. Um, what he's done without Towns and what he's able to do, and you saw at the end that steal at the end. That's just how he's played all season long for us. Yeah. It's, one, it's one of the better acquisitions in recent recent years. I think I love yeah. that kid. He he just knows how to play, and he's never really you know super out of position. Can't and, speed him up. And and I was telling Tommy, I think this game, Gobert had as big of impact as he ha as he's had against the Warriors in years. You know, There's they, no doubt, and that's yeah. the way Rudy's been playing. And I got, and I told Tommy this yesterday too. I think that the acquisition of Mike Conley, because D'Lo didn't trust Rudy like Mike trusts Rudy, and for for Mike to be on his team now, I think the the confidence level for Gobert and that sort of connectivity that they have as a group now, and then working back Nas Reed into the mix too. For, for them, for Chris Finch now to play these three bigs in it, you know, side by side, 
throughout the game was huge for us. We want Nas Reed to Killer. sign with an Eastern <laughs> team. We want him to go Warrior Killer. I told I told Tom yesterday, Nas Reed would be a perfect Golden State Warrior yeah. player. He would, oh, he, yeah. he would be he would be the perfect. You know, I think. Well, whether you started Kavon Looney or or started Nas Reed, not Kavon Looney's a better defender and a better facilitator passer like like the way he facilitates with this group but nasri would figure it out real quick yeah now it's funny because well not only can you not speed kyle anderson up he's a car that has three gears he doesn't even have a fourth and fifth gear They're like bro i got a three speed here oh, what, is it, a bike? Man, no. it, yeah. just, it doesn't go it doesn't go fast and it was interesting too because in a night where carl anthony towns didn't really get it going but he hit those yeah. two massive massive threes Edwards never got it going yeah. tonight. No it, rhythm. it was funny because in the third quarter, he got that step through layup and then he got two floaters in the paint. Yep. And I thought maybe he was going to start doing more of that, but he just never, it was, he just never got himself going and never got himself in that flow. But you just, in, in, in 2023, it's almost a shock to us, to the, to the system to see a game like this. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause we're used to 135, yeah. 128, all that. And to see teams have to grind it out. And this, I was just telling Tim, if the Warriors win tonight, you get some separation with four, five, six. Now you just bring everything back together. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's, there's so many possibilities now of what could well, happen. Don't you guys want to stay in six, though, to play Sacramento in that I-90? Oh. Like, like, Tommy, they've never played before. Tommy wants to actually work yeah. the games. So yeah. The, only, yeah. the yeah. only way Tommy's working these playoff games is if they play Sacramento. So. If, if, the, if, if the Lakers somehow make the playoffs and the Clippers stay in, we stay in, the Kings are in, are in. It'd be the first time ever since Sacramento moved to the West that all four California oh, yeah. teams would be in the playoffs. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. First time. The Warriors, Warriors and Kings never been in there at the same time. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out a way we could hit Sacramento, then the Clippers, and the Lakers. <laughs> Because it's, it's all about you, Tom. Of course, it's all about you. Of course, it's all about me. It would be great if the Clippers played uh, in L.A. and then the Lakers played in Vegas. Then you'd really be uh, on cloud nine. Oh, oh, I'll, meet you, I'll meet you guys in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> if there, There's no team here yet? <laughs> Wait till there is one in a couple of years. <laughs> okay, I got to go, man. I got to go catch right, the bus to sack. Love you, man. Love you guys. See you, Tim. Okay, see you guys. Jim Peterson, former warrior, former king, and former Houston Rocket, played in the NBA Finals, and certainly yep. played on some good Warrior teams as yeah, well. Yeah, that was my, uh, that was my bud. Yeah. And we, uh, we played together. We'd go hang out and get done with practice, come over, play video games for an hour or two, cook up some steaks, and uh, watch some more NBA, or toward the end of the season, watch some Giants games when it was an off day. But, yeah, he was single, and Laura was living down in L.A., so we used to hang out all the time together. Just a great guy. and does, does a really nice job oh, with oh. the Timberwolves games. Let me tell you, that's a, that's a, a TV broadcast when I'm watching League Pass. I always stop because yep. I learn things from Jim. He explains the game very well and uh, really pays attention to what's going on. So, No, he's really good. All right, man, we really will good. see you uh, Tuesday. Pelicans? Pelicans. Pelicans. So that's another game with huge implications. Unbelievable. <laughs> I think they're all huge implication games now. Uh, it is. Uh, I'm having fun though. It I, is I, fun. I, it, it's fun. It's like, fun. I, 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 I think. I know. You, t- I know. We'd rather you know. They'd rather be. Hey, it's the old days. You're fighting for positioning, and you're thinking, days. "Hey, do we have one, two, or three? And five. The well, old days. Like, last year was kind of <laughs> like that. But I like this. This is like drama. You don't even know what to expect. We're yep. a couple of weeks away from the end of the season. And they could play a number of different teams in the first round. They could play a play-in game, then have to just, then, then figure out who they play. You could be slotted in. It could be Phoenix. It could be Memphis. It could be Sacramento. It could be somebody else. It's, I think it's kind of cool because basketball seasons don't generally play out this way. No. No, and it, it's um, again, it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna it's gonna be it's great for basketball fans. It's it's crazy because every night there's a couple of games. Oh, I gotta watch that game. I gotta find out yeah. who's, who's who's leading in that game. Exactly. You know? so, I feel like we're calling playoff games already. Exactly. Yeah, it feels like <laughs> playoff games. So it's been fun though. All right, man. Have a good night. 90, I will uh, see you versus the Pels. Ninety nine, ninety six was your final. As we look down the DoorDash broadcast booth, some fans shooting some free throws. We uh, get ready for the Kaiser Permanente scoreboard. We start off with your NBC Sports Spotlight game of the night. That was in Charlotte, the back end of a home-and-home between the Dallas Mavericks and the Charlotte Hornets. Hayward to B.J. Washington. Throwing the lob. Dennis Smith Jr. high above the defense. Hangs and throws down a two-handed Dr. Pepper 
Doug. Time out, Dallas. Mark Williams is raising the roof. DSJ on the lob from PJ. Uh, the former Maverick coming through for the Hornets. That's Sam Faber on the call, Bay Area guy from the South Bay. And the Charlotte Hornets get a win. They sweep the Mavs, winning 110-104. to Luka Doncic got his 16th technical in the game, so he will not be able to play tomorrow night when the Mavericks go to Indiana to take on the Pacers. Meanwhile, Chicago was in the other matinee, and this one was down in the Southland. Kobe gives it up to Ayo Dosubu, and let's see where the Bulls run here with DeRozan high screen from Williams. Tamar, top side three. Yes! Back to back! Jacks, Triple D, turn on Lakers, and DeRozan back home in L.A. with 16, and the Bulls lead. Chuck Swirsky on the call on the Bulls radio network. They go to 36 of 38. They beat the Lakers 118 to 108. L.A. is now 37 and 38 as the Bulls get a nice road win. The L.A. did get back for LeBron James, so he did play in that game, but not enough for L.A. The Bulls get the win. Memphis was in Atlanta. Morant around a Jackson screen. Euro steps at Capella. Bank shot is good. When you need a bucket, call 12. John Morant right there. He gets the bucket, 24 for Morant in the ball game. Eric Hassel's tying on the call. The pride of Walnut Creek is Memphis with a road win, 123 to 119. Grizzlies are 47 and 27, 20 games above 500. The Hawks continue to live right at the 500 mark. They're 37 and 38. So Memphis solidifying their hold on the number two spot. No problem for Boston as they were taking on San Antonio. Well, this one got away quick. Jalen goes the distance, switches to the left hand and scores. They have not been able to slow him down, let alone stop him. And the Celtics, who trailed this game by eight early in the second, now lead by 30. Sean Grandy on the call for the Celtic Radio Network. They go to 52 and 23. They beat San Antonio 137 to 93. Spurs are 19 and 56 on the campaign. Cleveland got into the playoffs tonight with their win over Houston. Here's Garland, left of the lane. Hands off to Allen, in the lane. Powell with two hands. That's right. Make those bigs relevant. You're going to need them. Jared has matched his season high of 24 points. Tim Alcorn and Jim Jones on the Cavaliers radio network as Cleveland wins 108-91. Cleveland, 20 games above 500, 48 and 28. They have the best defense in the association. Rockets fall to 18 and 57. The Orlando Magic were fighting off the Brooklyn Nets. Dinwiddie a step back three, and that one fell off. Spencer Dinwiddie is 0 of 11 from the field tonight. Wow. It's like the platinum sombrero. And then Cole Anthony's attacking the bucket. Layup is up and in, and that might just about do it. Final was 119-106 Orlando, 32-43. and 43. But again, you hear me say this on a nightly basis. That team is going to be a lot to handle next year. Brooklyn falls to 40-35. and 35. That's a tough loss for them as they fight for position in the East. Are the Toronto Raptors going to fight their way into the playoffs? Van Vliet, Freddie to Siakam, Pascal straightaway, driving on Kispert to the 10, scoops it up, miss it. Oh, look out! Put back jam! Chris Boucher with a Sunday special. Eric Smith on the call on the Raptors radio network as Toronto comes away with a victory tonight over the Washington Wizards. 114 to 104. Raptors now 37 and 38. Wizards fall to 33 and 42. For the Raptors, uh, they're in the number nine spot. They're behind Atlanta with the same record because of a tiebreaker. They are three games back of the seven spot, so that's kind of out of reach right now. And with that win, they put Indiana and Washington, who are both at 33 and 42. They're both three and a half out of a play-in position. That win combined with the Bulls win. So it looks like the Raptors are going to be at least in the play-in bracket. So a nice win tonight for Toronto. Oklahoma City was in Portland. Giddy gives it up front to J-Dub. Howard dribbles left. Blows by Thibel, spins inside, scoops and scores with left hand, and begs for a foul call that's not there. Timeout Blazers, Oklahoma City 111, Portland 107. Matt Pinto on the call on the Thunder Radio Network, and the Thunder cruise to a 118 to 112 victory. They're 37 and 38. 
Uh, Portland now 32 and 42. They're just about uh, done. 43 25 for the Thunder in the second quarter. They erase a 12 point Blazers lead. And Oklahoma City right now in the West. Uh, they're in the play in bracket in the number 10 spot with the same record as the LA Lakers. And they're a game ahead now of Dallas as Dallas continues to falter. Well, the Warriors had a chance tonight to really separate themselves from the play-in bracket. They did not. A couple of late turnovers and a crucial stretch at the start of the third quarter where they did not take advantage, and they had their fewest points scored at home all year as they lose to Minnesota 99-96. To 96. Warriors 39 and 37. The State Farm postgame show continues. James Kincaid filling in for the ailing R.C. Davis, and he comes next on the Warriors Radio Network, presented by United Airlines. Toyota's Ready, Set, Go sales event is on now. Grab the keys to a Toyota certified used vehicle and seize the potential this spring. Shop a great selection of Toyota certified used vehicles and take advantage of low financing rates. All certified Toyotas pass a rigorous inspection, come with exceptional warranties, and include roadside assistance. Toyota certified used vehicles. The best new cars make the best used cars. Offer available through TFS to buyers with premium rated credit. See your local Toyota dealer for certified warranty and program details. Ends 4423. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou at 800-200-1966. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes, are overweight, or have high blood pressure. Term Provider has helped thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou at 800-200-1966. Lou will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Call 800-200-1966. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou's like you. He's on meds, too. Call 800-200-1966. 800-200-1966. 1-877-CARDS-FOR-KIDS. K-A-R-S, cards for kids. 1-877-CARDS-FOR-KIDS. Donate your card today. 1-877-CARDS-FOR-KIDS. K-A-R-S, Cars for Kids, 1-877-CARS-FOR-KIDS, donate your car today. With car prices at an all-time high, our donors are now getting highest receipts ever. Donate at carsforkids.org, and your car can be picked up tomorrow. 1-877-CARS-FOR-KIDS, K-A-R-S, Cars for Kids. One eight seven seven cars for kids. Donate your car today. Now accepting donations of land, homes, buildings, or any kind of real estate. Sacramento Kings. Kings that up at. They're two games back of the second seeded Memphis Grizzlies. So Kings still with everything to play for as they try to climb up the standings, much like the Timberwolves are attempting to do thus far. For Alan Horton, I'm Cal Soderquist saying so long here this evening. Big thanks to our on site engineer, Mike, doing excellent work at the Chase Center in San Francisco. Big thanks to each and every one of you for staying up late on this Sunday and tuning in to what turned out to be a fantastic matchup, a great back and forth game that the Wolves ultimately were able to prevail in. Sleep fast. We'll talk to you again this time tomorrow night, Wolves and Kings. If it's anything like the last time these two teams met up in Sacramento, 
We are in for a barn burner. Of course, that one uh, was defense optional. The Wolves ultimately prevailing. We'll see if that is the case again tomorrow evening. It's a 9 o'clock Central Time tip-off from Sacramento, meaning our pregame coverage comes your way at 8.30. We hope you'll join us then all across the XL Energy Timberwolves Radio Network. You've been listening to Timberwolves Basketball, brought to you by U.S. Bank, the official bank of the Minnesota Timberwolves, equal housing lender, member FDIC. By Excel Energy, matching you with clean energy saving solutions, because energy is everything. By Mayo Clinic, your source for medical answers. And by Aura, the official digital security partner of the Minnesota Timberwolves. This has been a presentation of the Timberwolves Radio Network. This has been a presentation of Odyssey Sports, presented by Indeed. Post a job today at Indeed.com slash hire. Good evening once again. This is Jonathan Lowe here in the News Talk A3OWCCO studios, wrapping up a very busy day across the sports world, especially here in the Twin Cities area. A lot of teams from the area are are, are basically going through some uh, – some huge games today, including the Timberwolves. You just heard twins getting ready for the season opener starting next week. So we're good.